flip this thing on because it's getting ready to be on. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bell Ringer. My name is Greg. Your guest name today are Althea and Jenna Lurson, the mom and daughter team of Leadership Buffalo. I just graduated from the program in the 2019 Rising Leaders class. You may have heard a previous episode with two of my classmates, and now we're talking with the team that is behind the whole program. We talk about the things you learn along the way, and really importantly, some of the projects alumni have taken on to better our community after graduation. Thanks so much for listening. So for those that don't know, what is Leadership Buffalo? Okay, we love to talk about Leadership Buffalo. So <laughs> <laughs> Leadership Buffalo is a community nonprofit where uh, we work from work with everyone from high school students to senior executives and increase their ability to lead by opening their eyes, minds, breaking down biases and stereotypes, and basically um, connecting people to inspire change. Great. Mm -hmm. And Jenna, what does that look like in practice? What are some of the day sessions throughout the year? I obviously just yeah. graduated Went the program, it. so yeah. um, this is pretty fresh in my mind, mm -hmm. but for those that don't know. Yeah, each we meet once a month with the groups. There's different topics that we focus on, education, hunger and poverty, criminal justice, diversity, arts and culture, uh, economic development, healthcare, pretty much everything in the city that's really important. A lot of the, we look at the critical issues and the challenges, immerse people into the community and learn about things that they didn't know they didn't know. And then at the end of the year, they've got all this new knowledge that they take and you know run with. Um, and our new tagline is connecting people, inspiring change. So that developed out of what the programs actually provide. To we, we like to say too that we don't tell people the challenges that we face in our community. We show them, our, the cities, our classroom and really getting people out of their bubble and to really understand that we are a, a divided city and divided community and we need to, as leaders, it's our responsibility to, um, to change and help people get more opportunities and, and be able to equal, equalize mm -hmm. our community a little better. Yeah, bringing all the sides together. together. Right. Yeah. And you just listed some of the day sessions. You guys obviously mm -hmm. go through this cycle mm -hmm. every single year. <laughs> I'll ask both of you, but Althea mm -hmm. first. Is there like one day or topic that stands out to you that always kind of wows people or maybe is your personal favorite? Yeah, and my personal favorite is um, Neighborhood Transportation Day. Okay. And it used to be Neighborhood Day that we added transportation a few years ago. Yeah. Um, a couple years ago, I was challenged by the Rural Outreach Center to give up my car for a week. And I've never rode a bus in my entire life. I was a Williamsville kid. I um, live in the city now, and um, it was such an eye-opening experience for me because 41% of our community is transit dependent. So since I did it, we have the entire class do it. <laughs> so they have to, I never <laughs> asked them to do something I wouldn't do myself. So we actually have them riding public transportation for the entire day, and we send them out into neighborhoods um, that they're not familiar with, and they, they don't get instructions on how to find what bus to go on. Mm -hmm. And um, while they're there, they have to go find a food store and spend six dollars and thirty six cents to buy a meals for a family of four living at the low income level um, for three meals for the day um, and try to make it healthy which is extremely hard to do because we have many food deserts in our community so um, it really opens people's eyes to what our our neighbors experience on a daily basis you know the next day we get to pick up our car and start our lives back as they were they don't get a chance to do that. So really getting them to understand and helping build their servant leadership capacity. Yeah, I think uh, I was in your group this yeah. year for that. We <laughs> rode the bus all right. went to the West Side Bazaar and yeah. all that fun stuff. So yeah. that was a great day. How about you, Jenna? I think the first day, which is hunger and poverty, is my favorite, although it's such a heavy and kind of depressing topic. But I think it's so critical to show people that first and then how every other day kind of connects back to that, especially in the Neighborhood and Transportation Day, because you're going into all these other areas that you normally wouldn't have been in and see the effect that hunger and poverty have on that. Like, we have Education Day this month, and you already see the, 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 the disparity between certain schools in different areas, and kids can't even get to school if, they're, if they're, the family isn't focused on their education it's more of like just getting by day to day so I think it's it's a really good first day session too because it kind of sets the scene for the rest of the year and what we're going to be focusing on and 
I, yeah. I remember the poverty simulation. Yes. Being like one of the most mm -hmm. talked about things at yeah. happy hour after. Mm -hmm. That kind of, it just like sticks with it's you for a while. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's only an hour, the poverty simulation, but it's so frustrating and it's a simulation, right? It's not even real life. Mm -hmm. So right. I think that's really but it's impactful. how many of our neighbors live on yeah. a daily mm -hmm. basis. So obviously you're opening all these leaders' eyes to these different topics and issues in our community. Mm -hmm. To me, the other side of the coin is just the camaraderie and connections you can make between leaders mm -hmm. across industries. Uh, Buffalo is known as the city of good neighbors. Why do you think that's such like a valuable part of the program that people might not even think of on the surface level, but to build those connections with people you might have never ever yeah. interacted with or networked with? So many of us um, stick with what we know, stick with our familiar, that's just human nature. Um, in our programs, we pride ourselves on making sure we have people from small business, large companies, nonprofits, both large and small, um, educators, civic public servants, and community leaders. And it's all of a sudden you're meeting people that are, are not in the same walk of life as you. They don't do the same type of work as you do. And you find out they're such great people, and, they're, and it really just expands your social capital in our community and really creates that one more, um, it increases that city of good neighbors. And, and just getting people to cross um, ba barriers and cross boundaries and really get people to work together and understand that we all belong to this community together. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just this you know big company over here or this small business. We all can help each other and the more we can help Buffalo grow, we're all going to benefit from that as well. And the friendships that are formed are amazing. Yeah. There's still classes from 19, the 1990s that get together. Um, there's, they get together, some get together once a year, some get together more often. Mm -hmm. um, I know your class is very recent, so you guys get together quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but it's just Probably the friendships. <laughs> yeah, we've had a few marriages, too. We've had a few marriages yeah. along the way. I met one my husband. Really? Yeah. yeah, but I also met one of my best friends in the class, and yeah. she was in my wedding. So it's mm -hmm. more than just the really strong professional relationships that form, but it's the personal ones that you find people that are really passionate about similar things. Mm -hmm and you get to just kind of live simultaneously while doing like great stuff, but also having a, a brand new friendship. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty great. And you learn so much together and go mm -hmm. through so many kind of like emotional, heavy days together right. that there's that shared experience yeah. that you don't just get like meeting someone at, at a networking event. Exactly. I think that's what the difference is too, Greg, is that you know, if you can go to a networking event and you have your rubber, you have your chicken lunch or dinner and <laughs> you listen to a speaker and it's it's wonderful and you chat about what you do for a living. But we're experiencing so much um, emotion during our days and people. So you really spend such a um, much more in-depth, you have a much more in-depth relationship with the people that you go through the class with. Mm -hmm. right. So out of these connections and friendships and all the experiences throughout the program it's kind of like the beginning of the conversation mm -hmm. like we said at our right. closing retreat and the goal is to equip all these leaders with the tools necessary to go on and do yeah. projects and make an impact not just at their jobs but with mm -hmm. nonprofits and philanthropy and beyond um, Jenna do you have any anecdotes or stories about class projects afterwards and the impact yeah. they've made yeah um, we started this in 2012 and <laughs> it was, a, yeah, there was some kinks to work out because we were trying to get 100 people to do one thing. Um, so after a few years, the 2014 class had a small group had adopted the Mad Urban Hope Center and still work with them to this day, um, kind of readjusted what their focus was. But a couple years ago, they turned the basement of the Hope Center into a certified warming shelter for Code Blue Nights, which I think is really impactful because we live in Buffalo, you know, and this winter has been a little bit nicer to us, but still unpredictable. So I think that was really cool. And then some individual things, um, Sarah Beth Fisher from the 2018 class, she works for the Bills, and after her day session where we visited the Family Justice Center, she decided she wanted to get more involved and joined the Junior Board of Directors. So just like there's a lot of really great group things that happen, and then there's a lot of really incredible individual changes that people make. There's quite a few of our organizations, um, Mad Urban Hope Center is one of them, along with um, Family Justice Center and also um, um, Peace Prince that are packed with Leadership Buffalo grads as far as board yeah. members go. And, and they make really good board members because mm -hmm. they're so aware of the need 
that those organizations are supporting, mm -hmm. that they, they really um, tap into us to help um, find those board members. So there's projects that get done, there's board mm -hmm. service, there's volunteering. Um, sometimes they even take it home to their families and have their kids volunteer. So it's really expanding people's knowledge that it's important for us to give back and be best leaders give rather yeah. than take. I think one of my favorite things from your class was that in the middle of the year, they kind of started something before your year was even over. So with the Seneca Street Community mm -hmm. Development Corporation, as you know, Jason Holler decided to create a video production workshop for the students over there. And so it's every week and the kids just love to have fun. But then Cam Smith, of course, <laughs> is a great fundraiser, loves to, knows how to throw a good event. So it's number one podcast. Exactly, fan. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Who's gonna hear this? Yeah. <laughs> shout out to Cam. Shout out. Um, but I think you guys have had two events and raised like five thousand dollars for the mm -hmm. for the organization only in a couple months. And you also know? board members too. They've actually reached out to us for board members. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's just really great to see the mm -hmm. passion that comes naturally and develops organically mm -hmm. through the class. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say from our class with Seneca Street um, mm -hmm. or Seneca CDC yeah. and then um, my team, the Family Promise mm -hmm. uh, of Western oh, New York, right. the kind of small yeah. homelessness shelter. We got them connected to um, a like student marketing and advertising event called Brand Hack and they got some mm -hmm. free creative out of it. The oh, students awesome. get a portfolio piece and, yeah. and we're working on like some more PR media type placements mm -hmm. for their... Um, expansion but mm -hmm. we can't forget the let's go to buffalo too and the yeah, goats they, yeah they help purchase the bus they've got a big fundraiser yeah the they're goat helping tote. with the design to wrap the bus the mm -hmm. goat tote and then we also have the best self group that's working with the best self to help them build the new child advocacy center um i think they're yeah. doing a meat raffle or i think that might be yeah. the stanley falk school so there's a lot yeah. of stuff going and on and buffalo art studio too and then mm -hmm. peace prince was another one that came out of your class so and BCAP another one too yep mm -hmm. and yep yeah. so there's just kind of all different industries of agencies that they're working with too it's not just one like specific for impoverished fam impoverished families you know there's arts there's goats so it's like <laughs> it's kind of all over the range yeah. there yeah. yeah and that's that's just in a, a couple months since we graduated right. but think about a class from 2014 still mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. Matter and you know Hope Center yep. and, yeah. the impact, the lasting mm -hmm. impact and cyclical impact that mm -hmm. your graduates can have is really yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, so I do want to talk about, you have a program specifically yes. for executives that have relocated mm -hmm. to Buffalo. We recently mm -hmm. launched Be in Buffalo, which is our talent attraction mm -hmm. campaign to try and get folks to either move back or move here. Mm -hmm. um, and especially for those mid and high skilled jobs that a lot of those executives are in. Mm -hmm. Althea, can you talk a bit about that program and kind of the ins and outs of it. Sure. Um, as a matter of fact, Tom Kaczarski, your CEO, is one of our grads. Yes. Um, <laughs> then actually he's speaking at the first class, which is next week, um, and we're showing that video. <laughs> so oh, yeah. 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 We've got about 22 people in this Full circle. Group, so, right? <laughs> but they, um, this, this program is for recently relocated, uh, not just executives, people, um, or, or also for two for executives who have not had a chance to go through the full Leadership Buffalo programs and don't have the time in their schedule. Um, so this is a program where we like to teach people really quickly that we're more than snow and chicken wings. Um, we um, have that they include their spouse, partner, significant other in this program as well to help the entire family get acclimated into our community. Um, they see some of the wonderful things and sites that we have here in Buffalo City Hall tours of Darwin Martin House. Um, they meet uh, our key leaders, elected officials, um, get a chance to meet each other. Um, and then they dine in some of our great restaurants, and not always just the expensive ones. We go to some of our tried and true Ulrich's Tavern and mm -hmm. Chefs and places like that. Um, and then certainly the other ones, you know, such as Oliver's. And we have a wonderful year with them um, to get them to feel that they're part of our community. So mm -hmm. um, that program runs in the evening. It runs from March through November every year. And then they graduate with our other classes and become... Um, full members of Leadership Buffalo with all the same benefit um, benefits as any alumni has. And I believe we have three experienced Buffalo graduates on our board. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they stay involved mm -hmm. just as much. And how do you see those perceptions changing? I mean, Tom obviously grew up here, moved away, and came right. back, so right. he had an idea. But yeah. for folks that have 
maybe never been here and it is just snow chicken wings and bills <laughs> tailgates to them yeah. <laughs> what's your what's, good yeah, yeah all I, good things all i will tell you a funny story we had a, a, a lovely couple from uh, chicago that was in last year's class and they said your weather's awesome i don't know what they're talking about because <laughs> chicago is so much worse it's terrible and we love Buffalo. And last year was not the mild winter that we had this year. So right. that perception that is out nat- nationally, they realize that that's not true. And I really appreciate that because you know I argue with Al Roker on Facebook <laughs> all the time. Every day. Uh, yeah. Yeah, every day. Because <laughs> he keeps dissing my city. But, um, you know, to me, it, it gets them to understand that we are such an amazing place. And they really, some of them don't want to leave. Like, we have had people who have um, decided to stay here even if the job they came for and switch careers or switch companies to stay in Buffalo. So um, it's just an amazing way. I think they like the fact that we are a big living room. So Buffalo is a big enough town, but it's not so big that you can't get a chance to really Mm -hmm. feel like you belong Mm -hmm. here and get involved. And, uh, you know, we've helped them as well get involved with board service and things like that. So, um, you know, it's just I think it's really created a sense of... um, People want them to be here, and they feel so welcome. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest difference. There was, I think it was two years ago at the first session that we had with everyone. We went around the table and asked everyone to say what their favorite thing about Buffalo was. And probably 95% of the people led with, the people. the people here are so great. They're so friendly. And I was like, yeah. And then, you know, everyone that's from <laughs> Buffalo is like, isn't that great? You yeah. know, so kind of, yeah. you know, it is. Uh, validating that yeah. thought. But I think they sense that that inclusion mm-hmm. right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for, for the Being Buffalo campaign, mm-hmm. I've been talking to so many people that moved here, yeah. and people is the one unanimous yeah. thing. Right. Yeah. People and food is yeah. the thing that people mention every single time about what yeah. they love about moving here. Yeah, another mm-hmm. one of our folks said um, he was he, he was here, and he, and he was from Milwaukee, and they said a couple of years ago, and asked him, you know, what's the difference? And he said, not much. He said, we have the same climate. We have the same business climate. He said, I want to tell you the difference. I'll be walking down the street in Milwaukee, and I'll stop, and I'm new in the town. Hey, you know, buddy, where can I get a good burger and a beer? They'll say, oh, down the street around the corner. You ask that same question in Buffalo, they say, down the street around the corner. Wait a minute, I'll go with you. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I remember there was some one of those travel pieces mm-hmm. that I have been yeah. writing about Buffalo lately, and one of the lines was, um, if a Buffalonian meets someone that's not from here, we're not just going to tell you about your city. We're going to make sure that you fall in love with it. Yeah. Or, you know, something like that. And keep Take them four in the yeah. morning. Yeah. <laughs> Be their personal chauffeur around yeah, the right. city and yeah. show them everything. Yeah. Buy them a blue mm-hmm. light or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, through the program, you two know so many people in our community. Mm-hmm. Um, what, do you, what do you see as our strengths regionally in maybe economic development for our organization but also, just more generally, we talked about the value of our people and the hard work, but outside of that, what do you see as some of our strengths? I think one of the things we have is our diversity. We have a very, very diverse population, which I think brings such wonderful um, traits to our community, wonderful differences. And um, I think, you know, along with the people, that is still people. Um, but I also think the fact that we're not too big, we're growing, mm-hmm. um, but we're not too big. So we don't have the traffic issues that I just came back from Miami and oh my heavens, the, the traffic <laughs> is, it would drive me crazy every day. We, our commutes are simple. Um, people can know each other. You can get support from other people. I just think that there's so much that we have to value. Our waterfront, I mean, it is the most glorious place to be in the summer. And I would like to say our seasons because you know what? It's not as bad as everybody says it is in, in Buffalo. I mean, it snows. We don't mm-hmm. lose our homes. We don't have right. to replace everything. And to me, it's, it's um, you know, to have that waterfront that we have and have the ability to be so close to New York City and Toronto for that type of thing. We have a great theater district here. We've got waterfront. We've got um, so many um, historic buildings and architecture. There's so much we have um, that it, mm-hmm. you can, um, our Philharmonic, like you can, any of your passions or any of your things that you're interested in, you can find There's something here, for everybody, everybody. I think. Yeah. And to sports jump off of it. I've got the sports team. So. Oh, sports, yeah. <laughs> We're uh, going to win the Super Bowl. One yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to jump off of that, too, I think the affordability of the city. Yeah. Um, it's really easy for the millennial-type age to thrive in the city. I mean, mm-hmm. my husband and I bought a house. We're looking to buy more, to invest in real estate, and it's easier to do in a place like this 
But I also think the willingness to collaborate is pretty important for Buffalo, whether it's businesses collaborating with each other or people. I think there's just like, that goes along with the good neighbors that's like, you know, that ties into that. Right. Mm -hmm. Obviously our, we've gone through this revitalization over the last 10 years. Um, I'll ask you both, but mm -hmm. Jennifer, what do you think is next for Buffalo? What's the next horizon? Ooh, hopefully something with the public transportation. <laughs> I know that's always like a hot topic for our school, or our school, <laughs> our, uh, our sessions. Um, but I think making it more of a maybe pedestrian friendly or public transportation friendly community, I think could do connect those sides together. So that's something that I hope is next, yep. um, that there's always a lot of talk about. And there was just that, the city of Buffalo just had the yeah. Future of Mobility Conference right. locally mm -hmm. and yeah. investing money on the Race for Place. And exactly. Some of those investments are already mm -hmm. taking place. Yeah, because there's so many people that need jobs and there's jobs that are not in a vicinity that they can get to and the transportation right. is a challenge. So mm -hmm. um, we've done some, some studies on that. And I think the education piece too, I think we are, um, what I'd like to see next, I think that is changing, is making sure that we're educating our students and our adults for the jobs that are available. Not necessarily, mm -hmm. not everybody's college career, you know, that's not the path that they need to take. And there's so many jobs that are available that they can't find the workers for. So um, to really start to be able to give everybody in our community the same opportunities. And I'd like to see, I mean, the West Side is coming around. The West Side is doing a lot of amazing things. A lot of our refugee population have really helped with that. But I'd like to see more done on the east side of Buffalo um, and mm -hmm. really, you know, start to spread out this amazing renaissance that we're having in the city proper and really start to spread that out to the um, other areas of our city to make sure. Yeah. But we got to bring jobs here. we got to get new people to come here to us. Right. Not just moving them around. From places. suburb to yeah. city or something. Yeah. Right. right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys so much for yeah, thank you. all you do thank in you. our community. Thank you. And you know, for all you've done for me over the last year <laughs> in our program. Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, we're going to have quick lightning round, blizzard oh, round boy. questions. Okay. okay. We'll go Jenna, then Althea. I feel like Willie okay. Guy's done this the today. Show. I know. <laughs> uh, if you were a flavor of ice cream, what would you be? Ooh, I think I'd be vanilla because you can add so many toppings to it. Okay. I was going to say mint chocolate chip because it's my favorite. <laughs> and it's got a that little is my zing favorite to it. kind. It has got a little zing to it. Yeah. That works. But I feel like vanilla is like a blank slate. I yeah, can add no, a lot it's to good it. One. Yeah. Book or TV show that you'd recommend? Ooh, I'm watching Hunters right now on Amazon Prime about um, Jewish people hunting Nazis in America. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. El Pacino. It's really good. Wow. Yeah. Um, I would recommend, I, it was one of my favorite books, is City of Light by Lauren um, Belfer. And it is a novel, but it's got so much buffalo in it. And, and it's just an amazing, amazing <laughs> book. So. I can attest to that. Yeah. Text or phone call? Ooh, depends on who it's from, but probably a text. Text, I hate talking on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Bills or sabers? Bills. Bills. Hiking or skiing? Hiking. Hiking, I hate skiing. <laughs> Last question, chicken wings, drumstick or flat? Ooh, flat. Flat. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely flat. <laughs> I don't like those drumsticks at all. <laughs> I'm like very decisive in those answers. Yeah. <laughs> Thank With you blue cheese, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blue cheese for sure. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. And thanks Thank for you. being an active leadership of Buffalo alumni. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. So. thanks. Bell Ringer is a podcast by Invest Buffalo Niagara region's privately funded, nonprofit marketing and economic development organization. Please rate this podcast, follow our social media channels, and read our blog at buffaloniagara.org for the best of Buffalo Niagara. Come grow your business with us.